Hi, I'm Alex. Welcome to the Reader Rambles podcast, a weekly podcast where I ramble about bookish topics and give readers advice to help navigate their life. It's episode two. Welcome. I just want to say thank you to everyone who gave me so much love on the first episode. I honestly wasn't sure if anybody was going to be interested in this and since it is just a passion project I was like whatever I'll just do it and see what happens and what I like about doing this is that it's something that I get excited about and it's not something that I'm focused on like gaining views or anything like that. I just want to do it for fun and I haven't really had that in a while. So it is January 6th when I'm filming this and I do have a current read but I also have some life updates I guess. I am on my bed today because I cannot walk <laughs> basically. Um, I'm not going to go into like all the details but basically I was at urgent care yesterday. I did get an antibiotic for my problem but I basically just have some foot issues going on right now. It's gonna be fine but oh it has been not a good couple days but I'm hoping that it just works itself out. <laughs> um, and I kind of learned a lesson from a lot of the things that have happened. I just feel like my life is constantly a roller coaster like there or like a movie like everything just always happens like I could just not slow down because something just always happens it's like I'm playing the game of life and then like something pops up and asks you if you want to do this or that basically whoever is playing me as a sim needs to knock it off because I just want to go into the new year fine and we're not <laughs> I mean I'm, I am fine I'll be fine but I just don't like stress anyway let's get into the book stuff. I'm fine. I promise I'll be fine. Just wanted to kind of ramble about some of the things going on and that's why we're sitting in my bed. I also need to just figure out where I'm going to film this podcast uh, because I just don't really get good lighting in here. So maybe I can figure something out. Anyway, what am I currently reading? House Fires by Connor Franta and I'm so excited because I'm loving it so much. I knew I had to start this for my first book of the year. In my last episode I talked about how I don't have a reading goal like number wise. I just don't have one because I didn't want one and I love that decision and I think I will do that all the time now because I just love not feeling pressured to read. I don't have that I don't want to say burden but I just don't have that pressure where I'm like oh no I am three books behind my reading goal like I can just read without any pressure on me like not like I was really pressured before but I think when I had like a number goal I was like just flying through books to just say I hit a number and not having that is so amazing. I just love it because I don't feel forced to pick up a book which feels so nice. I just love not feeling pressured but I didn't really feel pressured before. I just think being on booktube it, that can happen and I could do a whole episode about that so I'll stop here but let me just say I'm loving not having a number goal. It's awesome and I can just take my time with this book. I already started crying because it's so good. I am going to be doing a reading vlog. My foot thing happened so I wasn't able to like continue filming but I'm really loving this. I just love Connor Franta. He is so awesome and this book just speaks to me like I think that he just always writes books when I need them. House Fires is all about adulthood and about him being an LGBTQ plus person and how he just didn't feel like adulthood was something he would ever see and oh my god I felt that so much and I started crying like I am not even that much into the book. I think I might be like 20 pages and this has already just grabbed at my heartstrings and it's just awesome. Um, and yeah, so that is what I'm currently reading. Now in today's episode, I am going to be answering the questions in the 2021 bookish survey created by Jamie at Perpetual Page Turner. Her link will be down below and in my show notes if you're listening on audio. 
I am very excited to do this because it's a good follow-up to my best books of the year. I just posted that yesterday and I share my best books of the year and honorable mentions. I'm very excited to do this because it is a great follow-up to my recent video I just posted yesterday which was my top 10 books of the year and some honorable mentions and I realized that I missed a book in my honorable mentions so I think that this is going to be perfect so let's just get into it. The first question is number of books you read. I read a hundred. I also have my story graph up so I can like look at the stats. Number of rereads. I only read one and this was Sheets by Brenna Thumbler. The genre you read the most from. I actually have that on the story graph though. Their genres are not technically genres. My top genres are contemporary, romance, and graphic novel slash comics. Also memoir, fantasy I have nine and I don't know why. <laughs> I wonder if I can click it and it'll tell me why. Oh, it does. Oh, cool. Okay. So fantasy, I, f what? I don't think, is Night of the Mannequins fantasy? I don't think I would call it that. So some of these are just like books with fantastical elements. Sports, that's not really a genre really either, but I'm not too surprised because I feel like those are the genres I usually read. Now the first question is best book you read in 2021. And I already made a whole video on this and I'm also going to be sharing this book on another channel. So look out for that. I'll probably talk about it once it's up, but I picked Skate for Your Life by Leo Baker. I have talked about it all year. I loved it so much and I hope that if somebody picks it up because of me, I have done my job. <laughs> I just love it so much and I could just relate to it a lot and I really talk about it more in that video but I just loved it so much. I love books about sports and I just love seeing trans people in sports. Just having a nonfiction book about a trans mask non-binary pro skater was so refreshing and just interesting. Like I really enjoyed what I read and I learned a lot that I didn't know because if you're new here, I'm a hockey fan and I don't really know much about other sports unless I read about it. So yeah. <laughs> Next is book you were excited about and thought you were going to love more but didn't. And for me, this is Shaking Up the House by Yamil Saeed Mendez. I really did enjoy this, but I was a little let down because it is pitched as a prank war and there just weren't a lot of pranks. Like when I think prank war, I think like I'm going to be reading about prank war the whole time and there was only like a couple pranks but it's a middle grade so I do understand why there weren't a lot of pranks. I did enjoy it and I would recommend it though because it is about brown and black children at the White House and it's as the family is like leaving and then the new family is moving in and it teaches kids about politics in a way that they're not taught in school and I really did enjoy it but I just wanted more out of the story and I just wanted more prank war. That's all I wanted. Most surprising book you read in a good or bad way? Hmm. I have to sit on this one. I'm not entirely sure. I guess I'm going to say where we go from here because I really didn't think I was going to love it as much as I did. Like it was definitely a surprising book. It was just one of those books you read and you're like, oh my god, I love this. Like after I read, I was like, that was a good book. And I think more so it was surprising because I hadn't really heard a lot of people talking about it. And I am just so glad that we picked it for the Queer Lit Readathon because it was so good. I was so surprised. Next is book you pushed the most people to read and they did. Um... I'm not sure because I feel like I just talk about like the same books over and over and I'm not sure if people actually read them or not but my like top three are obviously Skate for Your Life. I also I think Between Perfect and Real is another one even though I ended up reading that 
in 2020 because I got an arc of it. I feel like The Passing Playbook is another one that I did get people to read. So I guess I'll go with that one. Book series you started in 2021, best sequel and best series ender. Now, I don't really read series that much, but I did read Heartstopper, which was another surprising read because I was like, not interested at all. I was like, no, I don't think I'm going to ever read Heartstopper. It's not for me. And then I went to the library one day and it was there and I was like, oh, I guess I'll just pick it up. And um, then I read the whole web comic and I'm obsessed. I really love this and I just think that I thought like, oh, it's just like a cute book. And it's just so much more than that. It has so many great conversations and I love it so much. Best sequel, I would say Delicates by Brenna Thumbler. I really enjoyed that sequel. A series I started was, or I started a duology, which was an absolutely remarkable thing. And I say this in my best books of the year, but I do want to get around to the sequel this year. Favorite new author you discovered in 2020? Ooh, um, no, I was going to say Stephen Cram Jones, but that's a lie because I read him last year in 2020. I would say Ray Stovey, uh, them, well, even, uh, I don't know. I guess I can still say it because their book came out this year, but obviously Isaac Fitzsimons. I'm just looking at my bookshelf to see if there's anybody. Oh, Melanie Florence. I actually ended up reading two books from her. She wrote a book about Jordan Tutu, who is an Inuk hockey player who made it into the NHL. And it was like a short biography about his life. And I really enjoyed it. I really like her books and I just want to read more of her. And so there's one. I know I'm looking over at my bookshelf and I don't know why, because I don't really have most of the books that I've read there. Oh, well, I guess I could say Hank Green as well, but that was his debut. I guess that still counts. I know I did read a lot of new to me authors because I have that in like my one spreadsheet that I track. I think I am going to do possibly either like just a video on my channel or I'll do like a bonus episode just talking about the book Riot because I really do want to do that. And I had really a fun time putting it all together. Or maybe I'll do a vlog where I just like try and read all of them. That would be fun. Let's keep going for the favorite auth favorite new to me authors. I found Chloe Lisi in December because she's awesome. I also have Adriana Herrera. She's awesome. And I think that's it. I think that's it for that one. Best book from a genre you don't typically read slash was out of your comfort zone. Sci-fi. And that is absolutely a remarkable thing. Oh, romance. Actually, romance. I love romance now. And that was such a plot twist because I never really wanted to read it before. And I think that's just because I'm just a bitter person sometimes. And I was just like, oh, like, I don't want to. But I love it. I'm obsessed. I love it so much. And now I understand why other people love it because I am so into it. I really think that the stigma around romance novels really was why I didn't want to read them. And now I'm just obsessed. <laughs> I actually really like that that happened. Most action-packed thrilling and unput downable book of the year. Oh. Well, I could like say three books for for that. Action Pack, I would actually say an absolutely remarkable thing for this because I was so hooked on this book. It was so awesome and really is another surprising read. Like I really didn't think it was going to be as good as it was. And it really was. Best book you read in 2021 that would most likely be a reread next year. Probably Skate for Your Life. I do want to reread it. Um, but also, I do have like a whole list of rereads I want to do. So I think I might make that an episode as well. I do actually have a form. So if you want to submit any topics, it'll be linked down below. Oh, favorite cover of a book you read in 2020. Hmm. That's a good question. <laughs> I'm trying to like mentally remember all of my books, even though I know that I have the story graph up there and I could do it. Hmm. Also for audio people, I am drinking coffee. So if you like hear anything, that's why. 
Um, I'll be the one has a really cool cover. Ooh, a kind of spark. I would actually say that I love that cover so much. Most memorable character of 2021, I would say probably Sky from I'll Be the One, but also Ellie from Starfish by Lisa Fibs. I think that was my like second to last book I read of the year, and I loved it. It was so great. The audiobook was awesome, and I just really thought that. This is a kind of book that kids are going to really enjoy just seeing themselves represented. There are a lot of mixed reviews from fat reviewers. Some enjoy it, some don't. So I would suggest to go over to Goodreads and check some out. I'll try and maybe link some down below. But there is like a divide between the book. But I did enjoy the book, even though it's not something that I have representation for. I did enjoy the way that the book was done and it was like really sad, but I think that it was a really good book that could be taught in school because it is about a fat girl who is dealing with a lot of fat phobia from her classmates at school and she's dealing with it at home from her mother and Oh my god, it is such a heartbreaking story, but it is so wholesome at the same time. Like, I just really enjoyed it, and it's a book that I really just want to, like, own so I can keep reading it, because it was so good. I listened to the audiobook, and it was only three hours, and so when I was getting all of my books down and organized, that's what I was doing. My also most memorable character our like favorite character is Macintosh from the Passing Playbook. If you know, you know. He is one of my favorite characters and reminds me of one of my characters in my work in progress, Breaking the Ice. And I just love chaotic characters who are also just wholesome and accepting. And it's just awesome. <laughs> He's awesome. Like, honestly, one of my favorite characters. Most beautifully written book in 2021. Uh, I'm not sure. I don't know if I actually have one. It's Just Never Going to Be Okay, I believe, by Jay Simpson. That was a really good poetry book. I'm not sure if that's going to be one of the questions, but whatever. Most thought-provoking slash life-changing book of 2021. I don't know if I really have one. I think that the Pocket Change Collective could work for that answer because I did enjoy a lot of the books in there and I do want to pre-order the one that's coming out. And I just enjoy this because there are so many different topics that you're able to learn about. I wouldn't say they're life-changing, but they did help me just learn a little bit more. Also, Max Domi's memoir, I really enjoyed that one because... I love hockey. Like, honestly, I just love reading about hockey and just consuming it. So that was a good one as well. It did just make me think more. And I just enjoyed learning about his life. Book you can't believe you waited till 2021 to finally read. Probably. Oh, let's let me think about this. I guess I would say an absolutely remarkable thing, but I ended up reading that because of a video that I did. Such a fun age as well. I realized that I forgot to say that in my best books because I did enjoy that one. Uh, after you read a hundred books, it's like you kind of forget everything that you've read. <laughs> it's kind of hard to like put down a top 10 after you've read a hundred books. Favorite passage slash quote from a book you read in 2020? Here's one from Where We Go From Here. It's hard not to think about death when it's running through your veins. I love that. This was actually also a beautifully written book. It was so good. I don't know if I have really any more that I can think of off the top of my head, but I think I kind of spark had some too. Sometimes if I find a quote that I really like, I'll say it when I'm like filming a video or something. Shortest and longest book you read? Now, this I have to go to Goodreads for. My shortest book is probably like a children's book. That was like my other like highest demographic, but that's because I work with children's books. So sometimes I get sent them and it's really fun. I really like children's books. They're fun to read and you actually do get some good information. I think that they're great. And no one should ever feel ashamed to read them. Okay, my shortest book was Squirrel Girl. And my longest book was On the Come Up. 
book that shocked you the most because of a plot twist character death left you hanging with your mouth wide open an absolutely remarkable thing if you saw my video where i read it i am like freaking out and i do love when i film my reactions because it's just fun like you can actually see like me freaking out about the book <laughs> And 10 was pretty shocking as well. OTP of the year, you will go down with this ship. I did read a lot of romance this year, but I don't have any that I like absolutely ship. I don't know. I feel like I'm kind of past that stage, but I enjoyed what I read. I would also, I guess I could say like the couple in Party of Two, I really enjoyed. Best non-romantic relationship of the year. Oh, that's a good one. <laughs> I have to think on that. <laughs> I mean, Delicates would be a good one for that. I think like a lot of the middle grade I read had some good friendships. Yeah, I don't think I really have a non-romantic relationship, unfortunately, but it's because I just read romance now. <laughs> Favorite book you read in 2021 from an author you've read previously? Ooh. Now, I already said the new to me authors. Bookish and the Beast was really good. Yes, No, Maybe So was also really good by uh, Becky Avertelli and Aisha Saeed, even though Aisha Saeed I haven't read from before. I think this was Becky's best collab. I really enjoyed it. Read 54 or like 55% new to me authors, 20% debut, and 24% percent I've read before. So I really did read a lot of new to me authors, which is cool. Best book you read in 2021 that was based solely on a recommendation from somebody else? Well, a lot. We could just go with the books that I read. Oh, actually, favorite book you read from an author that you've read previously, Off the Record by Cameron Garrett. But for best book you read that you read based solely on a recommendation from somebody else. I have to go with Last Night at the Telegraph Club by Melinda Lowe. I read this in my TikTok reads video. I read the first three books TikTok recommended me and I am hopefully going to do another one this year. I need to just plan things. Problem is that I try and be super consistent and then my life just like screws everything up. I swear. I could be on the road to doing something and then just something happens and I'm like, oh, well, guess that's not going to happen anymore because I was like, okay, I'm going to film and record episodes every Wednesday. Wednesday <laughs> comes and I cannot walk on my foot. Now that's why we're doing it Thursday. <laughs> I really liked Last Night at the Telegraph Club and Invisible by Michelle Lynn Hirsch made my list and those were really good. I feel like I do read a lot from recommendations and I still don't know why I'm looking over at like my shelves of books because none of them are on there. Best 2021 debut you read? The Passing Playbook, obviously. I think that that is probably like my number one. I don't know if Starfish is her debut, but if it is, it's really good. Best world building? slash most vivid setting you've read this year? I feel like I answered that question in my other like tag video that I did. I think it was like my Christmas cookie one. And I still have to say the Starfield universe from the Once Upon a Con series. I just am so fascinated when people can like do that. But when you're writing a book, everybody has to build a world. Even if it's the real world, you have to be like, where are the characters going to school? Where are they going to hang out? Like, where is everything at? I would say that one because I did finish the series. And I say that loosely because I'm not sure if the series is finished. And if it is, I'll be sad. That's another series that I, I guess I could add that one in too if I didn't already say it. Yeah, I would say that. I don't know. I read a lot of good books and I can't really remember if they had good world building or not. Oh, I guess I would say um, an absolutely remarkable thing again, because that was a cool concept to have to like build a world where these Carls are like everywhere. I just think that writing is so cool because people just can like dump whatever is in their head and it's cool. That's why I love reading in books. A book that put a smile on your face slash was the most fun to read. We have I Am a Prince, 
Oh my god, I love that. Uh, Small Night in the Anxiety Monster, loved that as well. A lot of the picture books, just picture books in general, make me really happy. The Passing Playbook, that made me cry and smile and just all of the things. I really enjoyed that so much. Another one that I really like enjoyed for the representation, just for the trans rep, was both sides now. I have never seen a character who has a packer before, and that was so cool. I really just loved the representation. It was so good, but I will acknowledge that there is problematic representation for the characters of color. A lot of reviewers have come forward and said that they didn't appreciate the way the characters of color were handled because this is a politically charged book. But I will say the trans rep was really good. It, like, I just loved a character who packs. Like, I love that so much. In my high school musical retelling, I want to write my character as a character who packs because it's just trans rep that we need for trans men because it's just something that some trans men do and I've never seen it before and it was so cool to see. So definitely made me smile because I was like, oh my god, I have never read this before. That is awesome. Book that made you cry or nearly cry in 2021. Oh my god. I read Dancing at the Pity Party and I loved it and regretted at the same time. <laughs> I texted my friend Michelle and I was like, why did I do this to myself? I'm like, I didn't think it was going to be this sad. And here I am like sobbing. I was crying so hard because I feel like just when someone else is going through like grief like that, I just tend to like think about how I would be in that situation and then kind of spiraling a little bit and crying because, oh my God, this is so sad. It is a nonfiction graphic novel about a girl who loses her mother when she's in her freshman year of college to cancer and just her talking through all of that happening. And it was like funny and also was sad at the same time like it made me cry so much but I really enjoyed it I like to see how the Jewish culture um like celebrates life when someone passes away but total trigger warnings because oh my god it's a really sad heavy book but I really did enjoy it and I hate saying that I enjoyed it because it was so sad and like very depressing because of the subject matter, but it was also really funny. And I just picked it up on a whim on my library's like Libby or something like that. And oh my God, I literally have not cried at a book that much in a while. <laughs> Hidden Gem of the Year has to go to Handmade Holidays by Nathan Burgoyne. Oh my God, I loved it so much. A book that crushed your soul. Hmm. I don't know. I don't, do I have one? I don't think I do. I would actually probably just go with Dancing at the Pity Party because that definitely crushed my soul. I was like in a book hangover after that. I was like, oh my God. Like I could not have read that in one sitting. I tried and <laughs> I was like, I have to put this down because I'm not okay. <laughs> Most unique book you read in 2021. Ooh. Oh, that's a good idea. That's a good question. <laughs> I'm still looking over at my bookshelf and I don't know why. Oh, you know what? I think I'm going to say Up All Night for this because it was a really like unique concept. It was an anthology of stories set during the night and I really enjoyed the prompt for that. I have a whole reading vlog for it and I do think that that was a really unique book and I enjoyed it. The last question is a book that made you the most mad doesn't necessarily mean you didn't like it. I don't know, but I'm just like a chill reader. It takes me a lot for a book to get me really angry, but I would say a book that made me like mad, I guess some of the Heartstopper books do make you mad because there's a lot of like homophobia and like just gross conversation sometimes from other characters like not saying that the book is like that at all because the conversations are so important but the way other characters react to stuff is so <laughs> does make you mad i would also say where we go from here that's definitely a book that's going to make you mad i'll be the one 
did actually make me mad sometimes because there were so many Harry Potter references. And oh my God, I was getting so angry that I was like, listen, I don't care. I do not care. Even if I wasn't in this situation where I don't support that author at all because of her bigotry, I also like just hate them in general. Like it just doesn't need to be the character's like personality traits. Like it's so annoying. It feels so repetitive when they're in there because I was just skipping. I was like, you know what? Like screw this. Like I literally do not care. And what's more annoying is that like I'll probably miss a key part of the plot. Luckily this time I didn't miss a part of the plot, but like it was just annoying. Like I really don't need them at all. <laughs> like fix something else. But also just sometimes pop culture references can be a hit or miss because it's like, I know you're trying to show that like they have interests, but like no one cares what their freaking health is because I don't. <laughs> like I was updating this on Goodreads and all and I was just like getting so angry. So that's definitely one that made me mad, but I still enjoyed the book. I just wish that somebody would have told me that. But I get that like people probably don't remember, but it's just annoying. <laughs> now moving on to the section talking about your bookish life. New favorite book blog, bookstagram, YouTube channel you discovered this year. Oh, Allie. Allie, she's now called Allison Pages. And funny story, I, because I've been on YouTube for so long, I remember her because she was in like a collab channel and I watched her and I stumbled upon her video because I was going to do a video where maybe I read Bo Burnham's favorite books because like Inside was so popular. And I saw she already did one and I was kind of glad because I was like, uh, I don't really feel like doing it. <laughs> like my thing is like, I only want to do a fun reading vlog when it's a book that I want to read. I don't want to just read books to read books. But her video was really good, so I'll link it down below. But it was so funny because I was like, oh my god, there she is. It's been a while. Well, this says favorite post because it's blog, but I'm going to say favorite video I posted. And this was my Hot Ones video. I loved that video. My reading YouTubers book recommendations, reading YouTuber books. That was really fun. I could go through like a lot. I do have like a whole playlist of favorite videos. I do really enjoy the ones that I was able to do this year. Favorite bookish related photo you took. Mm. I really like the one I took of Night of the Mannequins. That was fun. I love taking pictures in fall. It's just fun. Best bookish event you participated in. I had my first ever author interview and it was awesome and the best thing ever, like highlight of my life. And I got to be in the Queer Lit Readathon hosting in December and that was awesome as well. And that could also go with best moment. I don't know. I had a lot of ups and downs in 2020 regarding like my channel and all. You guys have probably already seen that <laughs> because I was just, I don't know. It's hard. It's very hard just being a booktuber for so long and just also being a trans person because like some people will only click if it's like about trans stuff and it's weird. It's weird. It's hard when you have like all of these ideas and you're small and then like the bigger booktubers do it, don't credit you. And then like <laughs> you're like, oh, and it could be like a good and bad thing. Like it'll help my video get pushed and other people see it. But like it's also just annoying and you should credit people whenever you can. But also not every idea is original, so I can't say that they copied me for sure, but it kind of feels like it sometimes. Just because I do search, I always search in YouTube before I post something because I'm like, oh, I want to see if somebody else has done this so I can actually like credit that person. And it's just annoying when you kind of spend a lot of time and you don't really get the reward. And that's my spiel on that. <laughs>
I don't know, like, I don't know if I had like a best moment in terms of like videos, but I really enjoyed making my video where I read YouTubers book recommendations. That is like one of my best performing videos, which is really good because I love it. It's such a good video. Host you wish got more love. I really wish my Hot Ones video got more like appreciation, even though like it did. I just wish that it was watched a little bit more. So if you're new to my channel, go and watch that. It's a Q&A video where I do truth or dab with like the hot one sauce. And so that was fun. I did make a lot of fun videos this year. My reading the most popular books in my state, I would say that that's another one that I wish had gotten more love because it's a video I had wanted to do for a while. Now I'm gonna just maybe answer like a couple more and then kind of get this done because um, it's getting a little bit long and I still have stuff to do today. One book you didn't get to in 2020 but will be your number one priority. <laughs> House Fires. Absolutely. Book you're most anticipating. And this says non-debut, so I actually am excited for Bitter. It is the sequel to Pet by Quake and Mezzi. 2021 debut you're anticipating. That is Icebreaker. I am about to read that after this one and we'll be doing a reading vlog. Series ending slash a sequel you're anticipating. The last book in the Bear Town series, if it's coming out this year, I'm not even sure, but it should, hopefully. And one thing you hope to accomplish in your reading or vlogging life, like YouTube life, I just want to hit 3,000 subscribers. I just do. Look, I know I deserve it. And I just wish my videos were pushed a little bit more. If you ever like a video of mine, sharing it on social media and just sharing it with your friends helps me so much. Like when you like tag me on Instagram and stuff like that, that you're watching my videos, it helps because then people will be like, oh, there's a new video. It just helps when you engage. But I do realize that a lot of us are just anxious introverts who don't really want to talk, and that's totally fine. I also want to accomplish this podcast, <laughs> actually being consistent with something. And that is that. So we don't have any advice yet, and that's totally fine. If you have a problem that you would like me to read and give advice on, you can send it to readerramblespodcast at gmail.com. I am willing to help. It is all anonymous. Thank you for listening and just for all the love on this podcast. I am so excited. I don't know what next week's episode is going to be because it was going to be my reading goals, but I changed that up. So <laughs> we'll see. If you would like to support me further, I have a Patreon and you can pledge $1 to become a paperback pal and join our community and you can get some exclusive things like voting on videos and voting on podcast episodes and more. So that is episode two of the Reader Rambles podcast. Thank you for listening. If you relate to anything I say in this video, comment down below. Let me know how your week is going. I hope it's going better than mine. <laughs> Thank you for listening and just for all the support on the podcast. I will see you next week with another episode. Bye. Man, you must have heard it like a thousand times. Tweaking little bits till you get it right and right and right in on bites until you.